this time if you have not already done so. Please join in our entrance song. On the song sheet, come now is the time to worship. Please stand. God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with a willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, and with your spirit. spirit. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Good morning, Father. Today's Mass is being offered for the intentions of Ed Sapina. Today we also have a second collection, and it is for the churches in Africa. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned, within my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Holy 
Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your command. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us be seated as we listen attentively to our readings. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who misled and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, says the Lord, the God, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble and none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord, our justice. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far off have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, he who made both one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims, that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to the Lord. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we continue the journey of the church in the Gospel of Mark. Today we hear about the outcome of Jesus having sent out his apostles on their mission. There is at least a couple of good points that I want to make about this short Gospel today. First, Jesus makes the point that the apostles need rest. They had been proclaiming the kingdom of God casting out demons, anointing the sick, performing miracles of healing. They had been surrounded by crowds of people excited to hear about the teachings of Jesus. They did not have time to eat or take a break. Jesus is telling us that our bishops and priests and even our missionary disciples, and that includes us, need rest at times to recuperate to replenish and renew our body, mind, and spirit, to have some alone time with our Lord, to be refreshed and so we can go out with enthusiasm 
and preach the good news of our Lord. The second thing that stood out in the readings today was the word shepherd. I did some research and found that shepherd is in the Old and New Testament of the Bible 112 times in the Revised Standard Catholic Edition. <clears throat> but what was interesting was that shepherd is only used twice in Mark's Gospel. And today is one of those two times. <clears throat> to most of us, a shepherd is someone who truly cares for his sheep. He leads them, feeds them, provides water, and protects them from predators. And if lost, will do everything to find them. When I hear about shepherd in the gospel, it reminded me of a trip to Ireland with my wife several years ago. She was, work, she was going for work, and I was just tagging along. And while she was working, I was out driving around the island. One of the things I noticed was how they reclaimed the land. They stacked stones that were covering the ground into walls like fences. The second thing was the sheep just wandering everywhere, including the road. You had to be very careful not to hit one. And I'm thinking to myself, who is keeping up with these sheep? Where is their shepherd or shepherd dog? I wondered how many sheep are lost. Did you know that there were more sheep than people in Ireland? <clears throat> I also heard a rumor once that the government was thinking of putting up a signal light for the sheep. In Palestine, the shepherds brought all the sheep at night and placed them in a circular stone wall with an opening for the sheep to enter. The sheep could not get out without stepping through the gate. The shepherd would go through the gate and call his sheep by name, and they follow, would follow him out. In Jesus' time, a shepherd was the image of a leader. The key line in our gospel today is like sheep without a shepherd. Dr. Brent Petrie says, Mark is alluding to the Old Testament. He is alluding to the prophecies in the Old Testament that depict the coming Messiah, not just as a prophet who proclaims the word of God, not just a priest who offers perfect sacrifice, and not even just as a king who is going to lead his people and govern them, but as a shepherd who is going to guard them and protect them and feed them, a so-called shepherd messiah Jesus' first response to the crowds is to tell them the truth to teach them the truth that is what people hunger for that is why people leave their jobs leave their homes and leave their families to come to listen to the truth the proclamation of the gospel Back in Jeremiah's time, the leaders of Israel, the priests of Israel, were bad shepherds, wicked shepherds who led their people astray, not leading them to good pasture, water, and truth, but actually scattering the flock. The shepherd Messiah, Jesus, appointed the apostles and their successors as shepherds of his church. He asked Peter three times in the Gospel of John if he loved him, and told him to tend and feed his sheep. Because of the pandemic, it seems that our flock is scattered more now than in recent times. With the dispensation of coming to Sunday Mass, some have come accustomed to not attending Mass. St. John Chrysostom said, you cannot pray at home as at church, where there is a great multitude where exclamations are cried out to God as from one great heart, and where there is something more, the union of minds, the accord of souls, the bond of charity, the prayers of the priest. But more than ever, we must be on guard for the wolves in sheep's clothing, the ones who will lead us astray. We must be careful with the internet social media, the false shepherds who trick us. 
who lure us with actual teachings but with untruths mingled in. I ask you to check scripture. Use your catechism to check Catholic teachings before liking and sharing on social media and not helping the great scatterer, the great devour, divider, devour his flock. There are many others who present themselves as leaders and are deceiving people. Have you ever had this experience of being deceived? Have you ever had someone you thought was a friend who led you down the wrong path? When the going gets tough, will this person you were following lay down their life for you? As Father Martin said last week, it is time to get back to church, to reach out to our friends and parishioners and let them know they are missed, to grow that personal relationship with Jesus, the Shepherd Messiah, to come to Mass and be fed the Word of God, to be nourished at the table of our Lord through the Eucharist, to receive the graces to protect us from the wolves in sheep's clothing. Father Hugh Barber wrote, the religion revealed by Jesus Christ, the shepherd and Messiah, is not an individual, private religion. It is not limited to a personal relationship to Jesus. It is a religion of society, which is the human equivalent to a flock. It is the religion of the church, a word that comes from the Greek ecclesia, literally a calling together. It is the congregation of followers of the one whose voice has called them to himself. Psalm 23 was sung today, and the church has it between our Old Testament reading and our gospel reading to show how Christ leads his sheep and feeds his sheep. St. Ambrose in his book on the sacrament says, how often have you heard Psalm 23 and not understood it? See how it is applicable to the heavenly sacraments. So I leave you with this, Psalm 23, and I want you to contemplate on it as I read it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green, green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. They anointest my head with oil. My cup overflows, surely Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Our readings today lead us to the true shepherd, lead us to the church and its sacraments, and lead us to the one flock. Amen. Let us all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He is ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. As members of the Lord's flock, let us turn to our loving shepherd with our needs and the needs of the whole world. For God's holy church, that we may be shepherded by wise and righteous leaders who will do what is just and right, bringing us ever closer to the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders around the world may rule and govern wisely, bringing peace, justice, and mercy to their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who feel lost or adrift, searching for meaning in their lives, that they may find in the kindness and compassion of others a glimpse of the shepherd's loving care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all men and women who wish to follow Christ, that they may respond generously to God's graces, trusting his leading them and to his service as priests or religious. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick who need our intercession, especially Preston Herman, grandson of Tom and Kay Herman, Frank McGraw, Debbie and Mark Mitchell, sister-in-law and brother-in-law of Debbie Mitchell, and Kimber Morales, that Jesus may call them apart to rest for a while at the feast of his loving compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer that Jesus may be the peace of our faithful departed ones, breaking down every barrier of sin in his precious blood and leading them into the everlasting pastures of heavenly bliss. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, source of all goodness, teach us the true wisdom and justice and give us the courage to apply those lessons in all that we do. Hear our prayers and grant them according to your will through our good shepherd, your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us be seated as we prepare the altar of sacrifice. <clears throat> Shall I want? I rest in the meadows of righteousness and 
sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion buried offerings of the law, accept, we pray, these sacrifices from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel, so that what each has offered in honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he has given us life eternal. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with the hosts and the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end, we acclaim. Fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray by sending down the Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be, to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Gregory, our Auxiliary Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Ed Sapina, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection 
and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and the glory, glory are, are yours now, now and forever. forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
that smoke and light was made. I am the seed that died to be reborn. I am the bread that comes from heaven above. I am the vine that fills your cup with joy. second collection today for the churches in Africa.
us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I'd like to thank you for worshiping with us. You may please be seated. Welcome to all our family and friends on Facebook, YouTube channel, and website channel. We're glad that you guys are here. It's getting close to the end of that time. Only five more weeks, and we cut the audios off. And we welcome all of our brothers and sisters back to the church. So just a friendly reminder that August 15th is the target date when the bishop will take away the dispensation and everybody is required back in church. So hopefully soon and very soon we'll fill all of these benches up with people. In the meantime, brothers and sisters, in our, our audio that are watching us on video and cameras, we thank you for being here and we ask that you please considerably come back to the church. Uh, we also have the, con uh, the consecration to our Blessed Mother that's going on right now. We're into day five. If you haven't had a chance to look at some of the audios that we've been doing, we've been doing daily reflections. I had the first five days. I'm done, right? <laughs> Father Lito, who happens to be in um, the Philippines right now, he is stuck in a room. He's quarantined for 10 days. For, so for the next couple of days, he's going to be filming from his hotel room. And I think that's awesome. So he's going to be sending us those messages, and we'll be posting those up here soon. We've also invited quite a few of you all to help participate in the reflections because it's not just us reflecting, but it's how do you reflect, and what does this mean to you? So if you feel called, if you feel called to do a reflection, it's a one-minute reflection. We invite you to sign up at the parish office. And it's a wonderful opportunity for you to express um, your relationship with the Lord and how he is calling you. A couple of other announcements. Uh, Sunday school begins in September. Registration for Sunday school is next week. Okay? Next week. Also, we have a registration in the back. If you weren't here last week and weren't unab were unable to uh, sign up, we have a thank you dinner that we're going to be doing for all of the volunteers, all those men and women who really just brave through this COVID situation. So if you served in any ministry during COVID, we invite you to please place your name and the position that you had um, and some sort of contact, whether it be an email address or a physical address, so we can send you an invitation to a dinner that we're going to have, an appreciation dinner for you all, and we thank you for being here with us and doing struggling through that. Finally, our community today is having tacos right over here. So through that door, we're selling tacos. Um, so it's either chicken tacos or uh, beef tacos. Along with that is corn uh, in a cup for, I don't know, I forget the dollar amount, $3 maybe. And then they also have fruit drinks as well. All the money that's being raised through this um, community outreach program is going to help and support all of our children in our school. So those of you who can't afford to fully pay for your tuition, it helps to support some of that as well. So we ask that you be generous as you can. And we thank you for being here. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful afternoon and a great week. God bless. Let us build a house where love can dwell and love can safely live. A place where saints and children tell our hearts unto and dreams and visions of the faith.